Lots of people have asked me, how do I go live on LinkedIn and other platforms? And then how am I able to repurpose that video, which is a live video onto YouTube without all the jitters and interruption you get usually when you go live on a platform and also how I do whiteboard work exactly like this. So I'm going to show you in this video my exact tech setup. The first thing I want to do is just go through conceptually the three component parts of any publishing tech setup for live or recorded video. And the important point I want to make before we do this is before I did this, I used to have a camera that was not connected to the computer. And when I had a camera that was not connected to the computer, I used to have to go put the memory card in, I used to have to press play, I'd have to take it out the camera, put it into the computer, pull out the separate clips. And it was just really, really hard. So what we've done is the setup I'm gonna show you enables me to do all this without an editor. It allows me to do it live and it enables me to do it direct into the computer high quality. And if you want to produce content, which is important, for any B2B decision maker, any B2B business that grows, it's really important to be able to do it quickly. So I literally press record. It records high quality to my hard disk even when I'm live. I have it ready on my computer and it's good to go. Without further ado, let's jump over to the whiteboard. All of the gear, all of the exact cables and connectors and everything will be linked in the comments so that you know exactly how to do this at the end of the video. You're going to have three main parts. First of all, you're going to have the input, which is gonna be a camera, a microphone, and an iPad. You're gonna have a converter, which makes it really, really easy to convert all of this information into a way that it goes onto the computer. It's called an ATEM Mini. And then you're gonna have the final destination, which is gonna be a computer, it's going to be LinkedIn Live and any other platforms, right? Those are the three components to this system. These are the various bits and pieces that I use. And by the way, I bought the iPad that I'm on on a website called backmarket.com. I'll put it in the, the link. It's used, it's refurbished, but with a one year guarantee. And you can also do that with this camera here. It's available pretty cheaply. So let me go into the details. So this here is a Black Magic 4K. I like the Black Magic 4K simply because it's giving the quality of the image you can see now. It's got a 14 millimeter Lumix lens on it. And it's really, really important that you get the right focal length for the lens because I'm literally this way, of, uh, this far away, and I'll give you the options of both cameras so you don't have to work out what is the correct length away when you're doing a live. Because this is on my desk and I'm just touching it here. So this here is about $1,100 for the camera. The lens is about $180. Job done. You will need to plug in a continuous power supply. I'll link that below. All that continuous power supply is, is just the ability for the battery to go in the camera and be connected to an AC supply. Because when you're doing lots of live, lo lots of events, the camera can really, really run out of battery really, really quick, quickly. And it's important to mention that both the cameras here, they give you clean output. What does clean output mean? I like Sony and I like Blackmagic simply because they give you that clean output. A lot of cameras, you still see all the white focal and the information on the camera when it's on the screen. A lot of Canon cameras do that. That's why I use these specific cameras. Let's go onto the screen and, and describe the second cheaper option together with the lens. So the second cheaper option here is this one here. This one here is a Sony A6000. You can pick it up used for like, I don't know, like maybe 500 bucks, 600 bucks. Again, it has clean feed and I use it with a I use it at home. I use it with a Sigma 30 millimeter lens, which I'll link in the in the comments. The Sigma will give you the background blur like I've got right now. That's really important. It kind of gives you what's called depth of field. It allows you to be the focal point of the image and everything behind you blur. So all in all, that's going to cost about thousand dollars. It's so it's pretty similar to the Black Magic, but it has the benefit of autofocus. So it's always going to stay on you when you move around. The Sony is probably a good starter camera and I recommend it for anybody 
getting going and doing live streams. You might be thinking this one here is 14 millimeter, but this one here is 30 millimeter. How do they work the same when they're the same length away? The reason they work the same when they're the same length away is they're a different type of lens fit. Won't go to the maths, just know that if you buy the black magic with a 14 millimeter like this, it will look like this. If you buy the Sony with a 30 millimeter, it will also look like this and it's the right length. In terms of the iPad, this was bought from back market and I'm writing on it right now. It was like 450 US dollars, I think. Something like that with a 12 month warranty. That means if anything goes wrong with it, they will replace it within 12 months. I think that's absolutely fantastic, don't you? And you buy it here with the USB-C to digital AV, that's like $60. And the Apple Pencil I bought new because I don't want the pencil having low battery. With the iPad, you can run it connected to power all the time. And to be honest, the battery's great. For $450, I am so happy because these are like $1,100 new. And when you're growing a business, growth is expensive, coaching is expensive, getting your message out there is expensive. You need to have virtual assistants. I didn't want to spend a full amount of money on that when I was getting going. Now, this here is a Shure MV7, it's like 220 bucks. And this is what I'm speaking to right now. And I like it because it plugs directly into the computer. In other words, this will go directly USB into my Mac. And a lot of equipment, to be honest, a lot of microphones, sometimes they need an extra piece of kit, a converter. This is great quality, direct into USB. Now, what do I do with the cameras? So both the cameras would go into here, which is called an ATEM Mini. And it's got four inputs. Why is the A10 Mini so useful? Because what the A10 Mini does, it's basically 10 years ago, this would have been a full broadcast switcher. What's a full broadcast switcher? It takes all the signals from all the different bits of equipment and scales them to the right resolution so that they look good. So I can just literally press the button, flick between the two. I can then turn this on at the top corner. Really, really simple to do and everything looks crisp. Everything looks easy. So how does this work in terms of connecting it into your computer? So this goes, these are HDMI. I'll link the cables below. It'll go out the camera into here and then directly into the Mac. So then from the Mac, I use a piece of software here. I use Ecamm Live. And the reason that I use Ecamm Live is that when I use Ecamm Live, it records two copies of every video. So it goes to the platform, it goes to LinkedIn, but also concurrently at the same time, it records a high quality version of the stream to my hard disk. So after I press stop in Ecamm Live, it's available on the hard disk and it's high quality, it's crisp, it's clear, it's good enough to put on YouTube. Because if you don't do that, if you download the stream from like LinkedIn, because it's traveling over the internet, you lose frames, you lose picture quality, the sound's a bit jittery. So I really, really recommend that you do that. So I record to LinkedIn, then I take the high quality version and I put it on YouTube. Now there is one step that I take. This is inside these scripts which I use. So here is an example of a video I did last week. I load the video into here and what happens when you load the video into here it transcribes the video and you can edit the video by editing the text really really simple so in other words if I delete this bit there it's deleted from the video why is that important to do editing video takes a lot of time if, and before you're ready to hire a video editor you probably want to do it quickly yourself you just literally load it into this software edit the text export it onto YouTube, job done. So this is my tech setup. I'm so happy with it, works really well. Hope it's been useful. Any questions, put them in the chat below and I'll be happy to help.